Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing an Ed Puzzle. And so the way that an Ed Puzzle works is um, Ed Puzzle gives me feedback in terms of how much of the video you watched and when you watched the video. It also embeds questions in the video. So I'm going to give some instruction for a little bit and then it's going to stop the video and on the right hand side of your screen you'll see some questions. So either multiple choice questions or sometimes it asks you a short answer question. If it's multiple choice, it gives you feedback right away. So how are you doing with that particular learning target or skill? Um, today we're going to look at fraction operations and so there'll be a few points during the movie that um, movie <laughs> during the video uh, that the video will stop and it'll ask you a few questions just to check your understanding and then the video will continue to play. So let's get started. Before we talk about fractions, I want to just talk about integer operations in general and addition and subtraction and kind of remind ourselves of a few rules. So I'm going to write down a few just basic problems. So 5 plus negative 7 and 5 minus negative 7. To remind ourselves what's really happening when we have um, like this double negative in our second example here, what does that really mean? And there's a few ways that we can visualize what's happening with addition and subtraction that can help um, to ensure we're getting to the right answer. When you're doing this work, it's really, really important that you don't cheat yourself and use a calculator. Okay, part of this work is getting this skill down with what's really happening with our signs here. So um, there's a few ways that I think help visualize what's happening, and one is a number line. So on this first example, if I were to use a number line, I could kind of put a point where, okay, I'm at 5, so I have 5, positive 5, and then I'm adding negative 7. Now, adding negative 7 is the same thing as just subtracting 7. So 5 subtract 7 is equivalent to 5 plus negative 7. And when I look at a number line, anything that is positive, I could go to the right on my number line. If I was adding more positive, I'd move to the right. Anything that is negative, we would go to the left of our number line. So just kind of take a moment before you add and subtract positives and negatives and think about like, well, what does that mean? If I'm adding negative seven or I'm subtracting seven, that means I'm going to the left, seven here, seven units, and landing at negative two. Another way to visualize this is if I think about like way back when we may have used like little cubes to do this, if I just say, okay, I have five positives, so some sort of counters here, I have five positives and I have seven negatives. And then for every positive negative match, that's gonna zero out, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one. And then I can visually see, oops, I crossed the same one out twice. I can visually see that I'm left with two negative counters or I'm left with negative two. Okay, if I have five positives and seven negatives, I'm going to land at negative two. Another kind of integer addition subtraction rule that we see quite often is this double negative. So anytime I have minus a negative, I like to rewrite that and I encourage you to always rewrite problems that kind of have that double negative stuff going on as addition. Okay, If you remember addition or multiplication and division rules, right? if I have a negative times a negative, so for example, if I had negative 2 times negative 2, we would know that that's positive 4. Same idea here, if I were to put like parentheses around this, this is really like negative one times negative seven here, if you think about multiplication division rules, and that negative negative is going to become positive. And so then here we go, well five plus seven is 12, and we're done. Okay, so just really kind of reminding ourselves of those basic rules. Other big is with our multiplication and division. So when we multiply and divide fractions, we still have to remember that a negative times a negative, like we just talked about, is going to give me a positive. That a positive times a negative is going to give me a negative. And um, that's going to be the same in our division. So if I have negative four over negative three, that's going to be positive four thirds. I should be simplifying that. But if just my numerator is negative, or if just my denominator is negative, 
then I can write that as, I can leave it as negative 4 thirds here, I can put the negative out front, okay? So just those basic positive and negative rules we wanna keep in mind as we move into these fraction operations. So we're gonna start by talking about addition and subtraction of fractions, and I actually think that addition and subtraction of fractions tends to be a little bit more challenging for students than multiplication and division. And the reason that it's a little more challenging is that when we add or subtract fractions, we need to have a common denominator, which we don't need when we multiply and divide. So that cut part sometimes can trip students up. We're gonna look at a few examples, just refresh our memory and how we get these common denominators. So I have 3 fourths and negative 7 eighths. When I'm um, trying to determine what my common denominator would be, there are times that I only need to multiply one fraction to get a, a common denominator, and there are times I have to multiply both fractions in order to get a common denominator. I'm essentially looking to see is there multiples of one denominator that would give me the other, or is there a multiple of both denominators that's, that is common. Now what's important with common denominators is that I multiply the entire fraction um, and not just the denominator piece. So looking at this first example, I know I can get a common denominator by multiplying four by two, but if I just multiplied four by two, well then it would become three eighths and that just has a different value than three fourths. So it's important that whatever I multiply the denominator by, I also multiply the numerator by. And if I multiply um, three and four by two, that's going to get turn three fourths into six eighths. And I think you agree with me that six eighths and three fourths have the same value, right? If I were to reduce six eighths, it would reduce to three fourths as a fraction. So I'm not changing the value of the fraction. I'm just changing the way that that value appears, right? I'm looking at a multiple of three fourths. So now I have six eighths and I'm going to add to that negative seven eighths. Now when my fraction is negative, I tend to throw that negative in the numerator when I rewrite the problem just to help me get clarity. Um, when we talked about um, the positive negative rules with multiplication and division, negative seven eighths does not mean that both negative seven and or that both seven and eight are negative. It means that that fraction is negative, which means I could Put the negative really in either the numerator or the denominator but not in both places and so I tend to throw that negative in the numerator just to kind of help me understand that now when I add what I'm combining is positive 6 plus negative 7 which is going to bring me to negative 1 8th so when I add my add subtract fractions I'm getting that common denominator Okay, so that's step number one is common denominator. Step number two is I just add or subtract the numerators. Okay, so notice I didn't add the eights in the denominator, right? I'm saying I have six eights and I'm taking away seven eights and that leaves me with negative one eighth. Let's look at a few more examples. So. Here I have 1 7th subtract negative 1 3rd, and there's that double negative. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this problem as adding a third. Now, there is, there, I can't multiply 3 by something and get 7, right? So for this problem, I need to multiply both fractions by something in order to create a common denominator. And so I would multiply the first 1 7th I'm going to multiply by 3, and again top bottom by 3, and 1 3rd I'd have to multiply by 7. And that's going to give me 3 over 21 plus 7 over 21, and now I've created this common denominator, and I can go ahead and add my numerators together, and it's 3 plus 7 gives me 10 over 21. Okay, let's look at another example, and for this one, I included three fractions. So I have negative one-fourth plus three-sixths, which I could rewrite as one-half, um, subtract five-thirds. So first thing I notice here is I have a fraction that can be reduced. So I'm going to rewrite three-sixths as one-half. 
Either way, I have three different denominators here, right? So I have four, two, and three. And so I need to ask myself, how can I make all three of these numbers the same? I need that common denominator. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make four, two, and three into 12 because they are all factors of 12. So I can make one fourth, I can change this into a number over 12 by multiplying by three, top and bottom, which is going to give me negative three twelfths plus one half, I'd have to multiply by six. So I have six twelfths. Five thirds, I'd be multiplying by four, which is going to give me 20 twelfths. Now I have a common denominator, okay? All of my denominators are 12, and I'm going to just add my numerators together. So I have negative three plus six, which would bring me to three. Subtract 20 more, which is going to bring me to negative 17 twelfths. Okay, now you're going to have a chance to practice this addition and subtraction skill. Okay, now we're gonna talk about multiplying fractions. And I really think multiplying fractions would be the easiest operation to kind of work through. Where students get tripped up is you get into such a habit of having a common denominator that you worry about having a common denominator when we're multiplying. And we absolutely do not need common denominators to multiply fractions together. So when we multiply, I kind of follow the, I try to reduce twice. I look for opportunities to reduce fractions twice. So first I look to see, well, can I reduce anything before I begin? And then I multiply. And then I look to see, can I reduce my final answer? So on this first example that I have up here, there's, um, no reducing that's going to take place, so I can't reduce either of these fractions. And I can also look, any numerator can be reduced with any denominator. So I'll give an example of that in our next problem. Nothing here can be reduced. When I multiply, I'm just multiplying numerator and denominator. So I'm multiplying negative 3 times 1, and in the denominator, I'm multiplying seven times two. So in the numerator, that's gonna give me negative three, and in the denominator, it gives me 14. And then I look to see, well, can I reduce my final answer again, which I can't. You may wanna write that negative out front, or sometimes, especially if you're looking at like a multiple choice, it'd be written like that, negative three fourteenths. Okay, but having the negative live in the numerator is okay too. Let's reduce. So I have four fifths times negative ten elevenths. So on this example, I can't reduce like here, right? Four fifths can't be reduced. And I can't reduce here. Where I can reduce is this numerator and this denominator. So that's what I mean by, I kind of call it cross-reducing. So if something lives in a numerator, it can be reduced with any of the denominators in my multiplication division problem. So I can reduce negative 10 fifths to be negative two over one. I'm just reducing that fraction. It's the same as if I had written negative 10 fifths over each other, that would reduce to negative two or negative two over one, okay? So I can reduce any numerator with any denominator, and I wanna to try to do that before I multiply so that I'm working with smaller numbers in the end. So now I've reduced, multiply, so four times negative two gives me negative eight in the numerator, and one times 11 gives me 11 in the denominator. Another way that I could have done this is if I hadn't reduced at first, so four fifths, times negative 10 11 so if I didn't reduce it's not the end of the world okay just multiply my numerators together would have given me negative 40 denominators together gives me 55 
And then I reduce from there. So I go, oh, 5 goes into both of those, and it reduces down to negative 11, or sorry, negative 8 elevenths. Okay, so last one. Let's look at one that reduces all over the place. So negative 4 thirds times negative 21 twelfths. So on this example, I can reduce, there's several places that I can reduce. So one thing that I can do is I could just reduce this, like negative 21 twelfths reduces because they're both divisible by three. So one thing I could do is I could rewrite the negative 21 twelfths as negative seven fourths. And then I'd still have, oops, still have negative four thirds times that, okay? So that's one option of where I could have reduced. I also could have cross reduced here um, to begin with. So I could have like cross reduced here and I could have cross reduced there. Now that I'm here, I could, go, I could just go ahead and multiply. I see that this can be reduced again where I have negative four over four, I can just make negative one over one, and now multiply negative one times negative seven gives me positive seven, and three times one gives me three. Again, you kind of just want to do the best you can in terms of reducing first, then multiply, and then maybe you have to reduce again in the end, and that's fine. So I did a lot of like reducing before multiplying, but I'm going to rewrite the problem. negative four thirds times negative 21 twelfths. And if I hadn't reduced, like reduced and then reduced again, it would have been fine. So maybe I see this, maybe I see, okay, I can reduce here. And so at least get something done, if, especially if there's so many places where it's possible to reduce. And then maybe I just multiply from here. And once I get to 28 twelfths, I can still reduce that down to 7 thirds. So there's no kind of right wrong in terms of reducing, except that you want to reduce at some point. Okay, whether you just multiply and then reduce, um, if you partially reduce, multiply and then reduce, however it works for you, but in the end, your answer should be fully reduced. Okay, now it's going to ask you a few questions about multiplying fractions, and we'll wrap up with some dividing. Okay, our last fraction operation that we want to review is to how to divide fractions. When I divide fractions, I remember how to divide correctly by remembering the phrase keep change, flip. So we actually never divide fractions. Instead, we change our division into multiplication. And so I'm gonna write a division problem down. I'll give you an example of what I mean. So if I have 1 half divided by negative 1 third, I am going to keep this is the keep part right here. I'm going to keep one half the same. I am going to change the division to multiplication. And I'm going to flip, keep, change, flip. I'm going to flip this last term. So negative one third flip means take the reciprocal of or the denominator is going to flip into the numerator and the numerator is going to flip into the denominator. So negative one third became negative three over one. Keep, change, flip. Now it's just a multiplication problem. So I'm just going to, if I could have reduced, I would have. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply straight across and I get negative three halves. Let's look at another couple examples. So if I had negative 3 sevenths divided by 
negative 6 elevenths. Remember, we want to keep, change, flip. So I keep negative 3 sevenths. I change the division to multiplication. And I flip my last term. Keep, change, flip. And now I have multiplication. Okay, remember when we're multiplying, we should be looking to see if we can reduce. So one place I see that I can reduce is this negative 3 and 6 can be reduced. And it would become negative 1 over 2. Now I'll multiply. Negative times a negative gives me a positive 11. 7 times 2 gives me 14. Let's do one more example where the format's a little different. Sometimes our division of fractions looks like this. It's like a fraction within a fraction. So 4 thirds divided by 2. Or 4 thirds divided by 2. So there's a few things that are different about this. One is the format, and I tend to take this compound fraction and rewrite it with the fraction or the division symbol. Okay, so 4 thirds divided by 2, so I've rewritten it. Another thing is this is the first time we're seeing an integer, so not a fraction, in our work, right? So 2, that's not a fraction. But we know that if we were to write it as a numerator and denominator, that that's 2 over 1. So I just want to keep that in mind when I rewrite my division into multiplication here. So 4 thirds divided by 2 over 1 is going to become 4 thirds change to multiplication, flip. Okay, so 4 thirds divided by 2 is the same as 4 thirds times 1 half. Now I'm going to multiply by reducing 4 over 2 first and then multiplying straight across, which gives me 2 thirds. Okay, And now it's going to give you the chance to try a few um, division problems on your own. Um, and it should give you feedback in terms of how you do.